Adding texture to MDF models doesn't need to be difficult, it can be very easy. G'day everyone, Viv here, I hope you're all keeping well, welcome back. You may or may not know that, you know, Knights of Dice produces MDF uh, ter terrain. It's not something I've been really showing a great deal of since really getting back into YouTube, but you know, that will come. However, I've just made a new sort of little river raft, like a barge thing, and uh, I wanted to add a proper wood grain texture to it. So the first thing is to obviously get our parts ready and uh, any kits that you buy from Knights of Dust should pop out of the frame just as easily as this. You shouldn't need to cut or score or do anything to them, they should just push out. This kit is now available on our website and I'll leave a link in the description. We don't want to assemble the model, we want to pick the parts that we want to add this texture to and then go and fetch our hard steel bristled barbecue brush. And this is what's going to do the magic for us. And there's different ways of doing this or, or different uh, methods of adding texture with this brush. You can see I'm being really aggressive with this. I'm stabbing down on the piece of MDF and pushing the brush across it. You know, sometimes I'll gently glide it across the MDF. It just depends on the type of texture that you want. Obviously, if you want something that's aged and well-worn, be more aggressive and do lots of this. If you just want something that's subtle, you know, go gently and check it every now and then. And that's pretty much it. You know, to help add to that worn and aged appearance of this raft, I'm going to just nick out little bits. This is one of the side walls with a sharp hobby knife. And then where you get little bits of MDF fraying, you can use that steel brush just to brush across again and help remove any major excess bits. But if there's little bits of MDF that are fraying, they're good to have there because, you know, wood splinters as it gets older. I like to use super glue sometimes to affix small parts to my kits. It just makes it a lot easier than having to naff around with PVA. And that's pretty much it. The rest of it is just painting. You know, I always start with a flat black base coat and I've picked two different colors of brown and a very light gray. That light gray I'll add at the very end. That will give me the appearance of very old aged wood but you can already see that texture coming through. So adding texture, specifically this type of wood grain texture, can be very, very easy. It doesn't need to be complicated or difficult, and it gives you a good result. Now, I realized why the grey footage is missing. It's because I didn't put it on the model. But I think it still looks great. Have you done this process before? If so, share it on our Facebook group. There's a link in the description. There we go. You know, texturing MDF doesn't need to be difficult, especially for this technique. It's very, very simple. You just need a good, strong steel, you know, barbecue brush. I probably bought that from Bunnings. I don't remember. It's been hanging around for ages. But it's as simple as that. If you want a more subtle, um, you know, effect, just go a little bit more gently. If you want something really well worn, attack it more and, you know, go hard. But, uh, you know, I think it came up great in the end. Thanks again for tuning in. I hope you're all keeping well, and I'll catch you soon. See ya.